and then um, good health abroad. Okay, so these are not necessarily related to safety, but they are um, important pieces. So I'm going to just hand these out and different ends, and you all should take each of these home. So please give your attention to Mr. Kirk. All right, thank you for having me. As Sandy mentioned, I am a sixth grade teacher at the King's Academy. That being said, I'm very energetic. I like to move around the room. You may see me over there, you may see me over there. I like to ask a lot of questions. It lets me know where you are in your understanding, your knowledge, your background, and it lets me know <coughs> what you might want to know more about. I have a lot of training and experience, not only in traveling, but I also work on a lot of counterintelligence teams. I'm basically, I would go down to the uh, downtown community and I would watch the guys that were going downtown to shop and make sure no one was watching them. So kind of like an uh, anti-spy thing. It was a lot of fun. I've been to different places like Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, <coughs> United Arab Emirates, Korea, Italy, Germany, all over the place. So wherever you're going, I might have a little knowledge and some tips for you. But wherever it is you're going, there are going to be aspects that are area specific. So there's no way I can cover everything. What is the main objective? Begin with the end in mind, right? What are we going to do? We're going to be ambassadors for Christ. So you never really want to do anything that's unchrist like. I know I can sit here and tell you that and like, well duh. Most of this stuff, you're going to say, well, duh, <laughs> right? But when you're in the moment, think back to sixth grade. They would say, don't speak unkind words to someone. And what do you do the second they bump you? What are you doing, man? Right? Same thing happens when you're traveling. And you're tired. You've been on a plane for three days. You've been sleeping on the airport floor because your plane got layover. And you're tired and you can't find a bathroom and you can't leave your bag unattended because I told you a hundred times don't leave your bag unattended. And then somebody bumps into you and you get upset, right? That's what happens every time. So we want to be ambassadors for Christ, get home safely, and have a positive experience. And I'm, hopefully I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to make that happen. So what do we want to do? Don't be a target. Duh, right? No doubt. Try to minimize your appearance as a tourist since thieves think of visitors as easy targets. How can you do this? Uh, number one, I would say don't wear anything with, I'm proud to be an American on your shirt, right? <laughs> it's okay to be proud to be an American. I actually have a fun story. I have a story for just about every one of these slides. You're going to have to stay with me, all right? I'm actually walking through Korea with two of my other friends. And one guy had a pair of cut-off desert camo pants that he had turned into shorts and another sweatshirt that said wolf pack, right? <laughs> Which everyone knew what that meant. We were American. As we're walking down the road, people are, like Koreans, are looking at him, turning the other direction. We're like, what is going on? No one will even come near us. Well, duh, we were screaming, hello, we're American, right? And where we were... Three out of the five people were North Korean sympathizers. No one wanted to be near us. It was the craziest thing. It's like, so we're like, okay, what's going on? We just kind of stepped back for a minute. We walked kind of behind one of the other guys. And we didn't even notice he was right there next to us screaming, I'm an American. <laughs> so minimize your appearance. Don't wear your camera out. If you have like one of those expensive cameras, don't have it out taking pictures or even hanging around your neck. What does that do? That just draws attention to yourself, and that thief's thinking, ooh, I'm going to get that camera. If you have it, that's fine. Keep it in your little pouch. Uh, wait till you get where you're going, then bring it out. You have a wallet carry in the front of your pocket. I don't even carry anything in my pockets anymore. Uh, even in my coat pocket, I carry it in the front. And I keep it large enough where I can feel it at all times. Perhaps wrapped in a rubber band makes it harder to slip out of your pocket. I'm going to be real with you for a second. Thieves exist, pickpockets exist, but they're good at what they do. That's how they eat, okay? They're not going to make it apparent that that's what they're doing. A lot of them like to work in teams, and the stuff you see in the movies, you're like, oh yeah, that, that's not real. No, it's very real, <laughs> all right? They actually probably dumb it down for the movie. They're better in real life. 
If you have purses or backpacks, sling it across your chest. I don't know if you've been told that before or not. Have the zipper, <coughs> people don't even think about the zipper direction, right? Do you want to zip it from the back to the front? No. What? If I'm sitting here in line and I'm getting money out of an ATM or something, all they have to do is zip it a little bit. They can reach in. They can put something in your bag. They can take something out. There's all kinds of things they can do. Um, never leave your backpacks, purses, or carrying bags exposed in a restaurant. I walked in. That's the first thing I'm doing. Doing when I was walking into a room, I'm looking. I saw all your backpacks laying around. Like, oh, <laughs> all right. Because every time we travel, you're tired. What do you do, right? They have these little bistro areas where you can sit down in the airport. <coughs> there's a nice little table, and you're like, whoo! You throw your bag on the ground. Man, this has been hard. Having bags right there, no one can even see it. It's sitting right next to you. No one can even see it. I watched a thief mess with someone's bag one time. They didn't even know it happened, right? I alerted at airport security. I was like, hey, that guy was messing with that lady's bag over there. She had no clue what was going on. So it can happen right in front of you. Uh, <coughs> cyber cafes, clubs, anything that can distract your attention, they will use. And they hang out in those places. They know that's where the tourists are going through a lot of the airports. So you just have to be alert at all times. So there's, it's really is mental training. I can sit here and tell you this all day. You're going to see it. And when you see it, don't go, I can't believe they're doing that. You just be aware. Of it. All right. Be aware of cultural norms. What do I do now? I love this. This guy's trying to shake his hand. He's just trying to offer a business card. <laughs> he thinks he's bowing and everything else. When is he going to take my card? He seems a bit unfriendly, right? Have you experienced this at all? Whoa, personal space invasion. Okay, so a <laughs> couple things here. Uh, actually, a friend of mine went to Italy when we were in Italy. He met a girl, ended up bringing her back to the States, married her. She couldn't speak a word of English. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those scenarios. <laughs> And we shared a bathroom, sweet mate, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or not, but he was in the next room, I'm in this room, and in the middle of the bathroom. Well, he brings her home, she goes to the bathroom, opens up my door, I'm laying in bed, she climbs into bed with me and kisses me on the cheek, and I'm like, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> Apparently that's okay in Italy. <laughs> They're just greeting you and saying, hello, good morning. It made me feel very uncomfortable, I felt like this guy, <laughs> right? What's going on here? <laughs> uh, let's see here, what else do I see in this picture? Well, one thing I, I don't see in this picture, but it made me think of, is if you're going to some place like Saudi Arabia, uh, if you're sitting down and you cross your feet like this, they see that as a sign of disrespect. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. You're like, why in the world would they see that as a sign of disrespect? You're showing the bottom of your foot. You're basically telling them you're worth less than the dirt on the bottom of my foot. Who would know such a thing, right? <laughs> so you really have to figure out where you're going and what it is that somebody's going to take offense to. Uh, another scenario. I was actually checking IDs one day. I was in Saudi Arabia. And I had been out on the gate for like 12 hours. I'm tired. I've seen a million IDs, guys coming through. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. And some British guy come through. I'm not thinking that for these guys. They speak English. We're all basically the same, right? Apparently not. Okay. Do you know what this is? Peace, right? Hey, peace, man. You know what this is? Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so I thought, I was like, all right, hey, guys, thanks a lot. Hey, have a good day. The passenger was ready to come through the window at me, like cussing me out in British, and I'm like, whoa, what in the world's going on? And the guy's like, oh, settle down. He's from the north, and the north. When they start cussing, you can't understand what they're saying. Yeah, I love those guys. Uh, I actually ended up becoming really good friends with him. But I had no idea at the time that this meant something bad. Um, be prepared. Don't obviously display your valuables. Keep an emergency contact information handy at all times. Store important numbers in your cell phone and carry a contact card in your wallet. Passports are like gold, especially right now. Would you carry a brick of gold around and just like set it on the table? Hey, I have this brick of gold. Look, everyone, look, brick of gold. Here you go. You know what? I love my brick of gold. 
You know what? Hang, we hang on to that for me. I'm gonna go over to the ATM. No, you would not do that, right? Passport is worth more than the brick and gold right now. How many terrorists do we have running around the nation? Just in the U.S. I don't even know, but you're very familiar with what just happened in Paris, places like that right now, right? They want nothing more than to get a hold of, of a good passport, especially a U.S. passport. Gives them free reign to go wherever they want. They're easily uh, messed with. So I would say carry three copies of your passport. That means you can have your, your regular passport, maybe a paper copy of it, and I like to take a picture of it on my cell phone. Keep a copy that way. So if somebody says, can I see your passport or do you need to verify who you are? You can show them your phone because you're going to have your phone out, right? Keep your battery charged. Show them that. And then for whatever reason you lose your phone, maybe your phone dies, you still have that paper copy and you're not going into wherever your passport is trying to pull that out. And the thieves are watching everywhere going, okay, I see where that is. And they're working in teams everywhere too. So have you ever heard of a mark? Okay, they, what they do, they'll mark you. So they have something, maybe a piece of chalk, dirty hand, easily like this, right? Something on your back, they come through and they touch you. And they'll touch you in a certain way to let their teammate know where you put your valuables. So if you put your valuables in your back pocket here, maybe they'll touch you on the left shoulder, and then let them know to go in the back pocket here. So they have ways of letting their team know where your valuables are. But if you don't ever pull them out, they can't find them. Right? It's easy enough. Uh, oh, hot commodity in the world. Yeah. Minimize your risk. Risk factors you can control. I'm sorry? Question. Yes, I love it. So if you show them like your phone or your, like a paper copy, that still is valid? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on where you're going to. If you're going to like TSA, they want to see your actual passport. Okay. That's when you want to have it in like a distinct location, like if you have a bag that you've zipped this way, shouldered across, you might have an inside pocket where you know exactly where it is, but you don't have to go into that spot every time. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you, you want to definitely know where you have it and only pull it out when absolutely necessary. So, any other questions right now before we keep going? I love questions. Give me some questions. Even if it's questions about some of my personal experiences, or something I've seen, or anything like that. No? Alright, keep going. Risk factors you can control include being out after dark. No duh, right? <laughs> Actually, there's an NFL player who he still doesn't go out after dark, not because he's afraid, but his mom told him one time, nothing good happens after the sun goes down. Alright? Why go out after dark? Being alone at night in an isolated area, being in a Known high crime area, sleeping in an unlocked place. You guys can read. I don't have to read this to you, right? Any questions? You've probably been through hundreds of these uh, safety briefings, I imagine. The question is are there any local customs or traditions or something you might do that is going to send the wrong message to the people you're around? For instance, being under the influence of alcohol or drugs. I know we're at a Christian university, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> right? uh, the devil is real, and sin is real, and when you get into a high-pressure high pressure situation, you never know what you're capable of. So, if you're in Germany and you're like, oh, I'll try a beer, how's that looking to the rest of the world? I should stay away from Be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention to what people around you are saying. Again, it seems like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how easily you can get wrapped up in whatever it is you're doing, and you're in a situation where you're unfamiliar with what's going on, so you get what's called tunnel vision, and all you're thinking is, okay, we have to get here, and then here, our next plane is here, our layover is here, or let's say you're actually in country somewhere, okay, I have to get to class at this time, and then this is what's next, and I have to think about my homework assignment. You're not paying attention to anything else that's going on around you. It happens to everyone. Uh, that's just a natural thing. But if you're aware of it, you can pay attention to what's going on around you. 
find out which areas of the city are less safe than others. <laughs> um, some cities don't have safe places. Does that mean you should be afraid? No. I still say, the Lord is with you. I mean, Psalm 118.6, uh, the Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? There's a difference between being afraid and being silly about what you're doing. Don't be silly. You know, with hours of night are considered more dangerous. Stay and walk only in well-lit areas. Avoid being alone. Do you guys practice these in the States? Why wouldn't you do that when you go overseas on right? Know where to get help. This is a big one. I say when you get wherever it is you're going, that should be one of the very first things you do before you even go to sleep that night. I don't care if it's been a 28-hour trip. You need to load the emergency contact numbers of the police, fire department, and if you have a local contact there, you need to load those numbers in your phone and write them down so you have them. Maybe if you have a wallet or a purse, put them in there. That needs to happen before you do anything else. What happens if you are a victim of a mugging and you don't know who to contact? You get so wrapped up in what's coming next, that's an afterthought. Know what's normal and not normal. See on a daily basis in areas of frequent. Avoid politics. <laughs> political rallies. It's so tempting to go to some of these political rallies, but there's increased tension and emotions, and people get angry. I still, to this day, because I've been involved, I've done a lot of what's the word? Not anti-protest, but I've been involved in a lot of riot activities. There was a place where we had nuclear weapons and we had a bunch of anti-nuclear activists. And so we had to stop them from going crazy, basically. Um, I also had to do another thing for President Bush. When he was here, I had to do, uh, because there was a lot of, there's always a lot of anti-president people, no matter who's in office. <laughs> Avoid those places. With conversations, try not to engage in political conversations. They're they're just trying to rope you in, basically. Remember in Saudi Arabia, there was. All right, you guys are all in college. I can be real with you for a minute. <laughs> There's a place called Chop Chop Square, where if you're a criminal in Saudi Arabia, and you get caught stealing. They take you down to this place and they chop your hand off. Right? If you're an American and you just happen to be in the area, they will take you and usher you up to the front because they want to get you involved in the political game that's going on. And it's a huge disgrace for the person and their family if you're present. So just being present can be a bad thing. <laughs> Any questions so far on any of that? I know it's kind of like deep, right? Don't panic. Oh my goodness. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. I've said it three times. It must be important. That's the teacher in me. If you're a victim of a theft, don't fight your assailant. Report thefts and attacks to the local police and your program support staff. You guys have numbers for your program support staff? You yeah, will. Okay. <laughs> you will. That's part of the emergency contacts that I want to make sure that you put in your phone as well. You're going to have a program support staff. Uh, put that number in there as long as police, fire. But don't panic. Listen to your gut. Never ignore your sixth sense. I believe sixth sense does exist. The hairs on the back of your neck standing up. Like, ooh, something doesn't feel right here. Should I be afraid? Should I? Make a scene. Hey, that guy is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. No, I don't do that. <laughs> right? Or, oh, something not right. Oh, something not right. Oh, sad thing. Just relax. Assess the situation. Decide what your options are. Remove yourself from the situation. I know. No doubt, right? It makes sense. So you're in the scenario. <laughs> Things happen in the world. Some good, some bad. We're not going to get into a theological debate about why that thing happened. We're good. 
while you're traveling overseas, you're likely to create some of the most valuable and positive experiences of your life. Maintain a common sense expectation. Things might not always go as planned. You can plan all day long. I know we have about half the room teachers, right? Student teachers? No? Anybody student teachers in here? All right, we, we have some student teachers. So you're, you've been taught how to plan for your activities. My lesson plans for my daily activities almost never end how I started. <laughs> right? I hope I get through everything, and I hope I can do everything on my list, but I cannot be locked into my plan. Now, it would be ten times worse if I went into the day without a plan. So that's what I'm trying to say here. Be prepared when you're going through the airport. Have an idea. If you can get a, a map of the airport in advance and say, okay, this is where this terminal is. This is how much time I have to get there. Because what's going to happen? You're going to get there and you're going to say, all right, we're headed to Lithuania. Woohoo! Right? We're all excited. We look at our thing. Where are we supposed to go? Um, terminal C. Terminal C. Where is Terminal C? Do you know where Terminal C is? Hey, you know what? Let's ask somebody over there. Hang on, let me put my bag down. Hey, do you know where Terminal <laughs> No, don't put your bag down. Have a plan. Know where you're going. Know what to expect. Sometimes you don't know until you get there in the moment. But yeah, the more you can plan, the more you can be prepared for, the better off you're going to be. Pack light. Don't take your shampoos and your conditioners and chapsticks and everything else, the less you can carry, the better. Get your stuff when you get there. You know, I say that, but <laughs> uh, I packed light. I was going to Saudi Arabia. I was actually in Saudi Arabia when September 11th attacks happened, and everything stopped. There was nothing coming in or out. We couldn't get deodorant. <laughs> we couldn't get uh, we get water on a limited basis, but we couldn't get shampoo, we couldn't get toothpaste, we couldn't get anything that you take for granted. The odds of that happening are very slim, right? You don't need to take all that stuff with you. Get it when you get there. Now, if something does happen and then you close the borders to wherever you are, yeah, that's a possibility, but not likely. Any questions on any of that so far? A couple good resources for you here. If you want to write those down, or uh, yeah, I have some. Some are printed, I believe. These are from the Department of State, Global Education. I have other good resources from IU Travel Safety. Thank you for that. Any questions? Yeah, there we are. Love it. But I want questions. No, I'm not leaving here until I get two questions. That's the teacher. Two questions. I'm going to sit here and I'll stare back at you until I get two questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, are phone wallets helpful? Like phones, you just have little uh, compartments in them, like with cards and stuff. I would say, uh, I would say no because I've tried to use them mm -hmm. and those phone wallets they don't give you a lot of space. So anything you put in here, what, this is what ends up happening. And then it won't shut, and then you have everything poking out everywhere, and, and it's a mess, and it's very unorganized. And then you're screaming, here I am, come take me. Right. One more question. Yes, ma'am. What's your opinion on those, the, the waistband purple ones that like go un under your clothing? Have you heard of those before? Yes, I am a firm believer in those. I use them especially the kind that can hang around your neck. Mm -hmm. Don't leave it hanging out, though. Hang it around your neck. That way nothing's in your pocket. They zip up. Tuck it in your shirt. Some of them have a clear little window on them. Any ID you have, perfect. Because uh, a lot of time traveling through the TSI, TSA lines, you can just take that out, show that to them. Sometimes they'll make you take it out. Not very often. They can really, they're good at gauging who's a threat who's not. You know what I mean? They say they don't profile, but they do. <laughs> They also do uh, random 10% checks. So even if you're like, man, I'm not a terrorist, but they do a 
firm 10%, sometimes, sometimes 20%, it depends on the uh, threat level. But yeah, often you can just pull that out. So, yes, sir. Um, so you suggest that we bring our passport like, everywhere? No, whenever you get where you're going, uh, once you've went through all your travel, find a safe. I uh, hope everyone has a, a lock, lockable safe where you're going. Um, I don't know. Who asked? You're going to Australia. Australia. Um, talk to your um, program leader there. Um, we recommend that, because um, all of you are doing different things. Um, Professor Hall will have different um, protocols for those of you um, that are just traveling short term. but. Those of you who are living in North Carolina, you need to find um, to see if the office has a, a lockable seat. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing is to just not leave it in your like hotel room. Correct. Or in the new luggage. It's better to carry it if you're going to, the only alternative is to leave it in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. So the situation dictates, depending on where they're going, how long they're going to be there. Even if you're going to be there for a long time, if you can't get settled in right away, just keep it on you until you can get settled and find your safe. As he said, think of it as a gold bar. You would not leave, or I, I, I often use $10,000. I would not leave $10,000 zipped in a suitcase in a hotel room. It's just not going to stay there. Um, you might think it's safe being you know, in a locked room uh, in a zipped suitcase, but that is not the case. I can guarantee you that. So anywhere you would not leave ten thousand dollars, you are not going to leave your passport. Hang on to that thing. I wouldn't want to be responsible for allowing a terrorist to move freely from place to place because I would be irresponsible with my passport. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on, one more question. Something for me. Something. Ask me what my about, favorite color. What about when they're walking down the street? Have you, have walking down the street. Well, I talked about walking down the street. Do not wear any clothing that screams, hello, I'm an American, I'm a tourist. Uh, make sure you're in well lit areas. You're aware of your surroundings. What does wear, being aware of surroundings mean? What does being aware of your surroundings mean? Watch for someone watching you. Or if someone is all of a sudden, they're walking and then they change their pace of walking. Whoa, what's going through their mind? What did they see? Is something going on around me? Are they looking at me? Are they looking at someone else that's looking at me? What's happening? I'm just aware of the situation. Something's not right. I don't know what, but now I'm aware of it. And looking like you're aware of it. Um, if you think about it, and this is going to be hard to do, especially if you're, if you're there short term, and I'm sure you've run into this, um, you know, you're, you're looking at this site, or you're looking at this, and they're aware that you're not paying attention to your surroundings. <laughs> so if you're looking at your surroundings, being what's going on the any potential um, pickpocket or anybody that's trying to make you a mark will notice that, oh, I'm, that person is noticing what's around them. They're, they're not just looking at this thing and that thing. They're paying attention to what's going on. They're aware of their surroundings. And that that makes you less of a, a self-target. Exactly. When I talk about don't make yourself a target, they're waiting for you to do that. They see, oh, this group of college kids coming through. They're going to be looking here and here and here. They're from that local area. They know what is going to grab your attention. Even if that doesn't grab your attention, they may do something to help grab your attention. And as soon as that happens, it's game on for them. Don't let that happen. If you're just head on a swivel, is what I call it, Right? Active eyes. Don't sweep the stair. <laughs> it just makes you uncomfortable, doesn't it? Like, no? <laughs> so, head on the swivel. Active eyes. Like, ooh, what's going on around me? Do I have eyes in the back of my head? No. Can I be alert and aware of what's going on behind me? Yes, I can. Maybe that's the teacher in me. I don't know. Let me tell you a couple of teacher tricks. A couple of things we do, we look in the reflection of the whiteboard. You can actually see movement, things like that. Uh, sound travels and bounces off that whiteboard. That's a way that you can just be situationally aware without... What's going on behind me? Does that make sense? There's all kinds of reflections. If you have pictures on the window, if you have 
windows, you can see movement and activity and reflections. But if you're so caught up in what you're doing, writing on the whiteboard, you have no idea what Johnny's throwing at the back of your head. <laughs> that doesn't happen in school. I love my school. I know he's mentioned this as well, and I'm going to throw something in here, but looking around the room, you're going to have to get used to not leaving your backpacks on the floor, unattended. You might think they're attended right now. They're beside you or behind you. You you, you can do things like or first put your foot through the handle. Oh, yeah. Put it in front of you. Um, put, hook, the, hook the handle underneath the chair leg. There's a lot of things you can do to make that, because you can't, you, you don't know how fast they are and how unnoticeable they can be and just grab that backpack right up. You won't notice it, I guarantee you. They know how to do it without you noticing it. You know I'm saying, pickpockets are real. They exist and there are a lot of them that good with you. If you have your backpack on, even if you think, oh, it's with me, I'm safe. No, you don't have eyes in the back of your head. You have no idea what's going on behind you. That's why I recommend the swing style. Keep it kind of to the front and zip where the zipper starts in the front. Does that make sense? It's the little things that you don't even think about until something happens. And if you have your passport just laying right there, you're thinking, oh, I'm going through the line, I'm going to need my passport in a minute. So I just have it sitting on top, and it's zipped up, it's safe. Well, they, they watched you take your passport and put it right back in on top. They know exactly where it is now, and they can easily slide right in. Oh. But I, I like the uh, hooking the, the foot through the bag. So that way, if there's any kind of slight tug on it or anything, where they want to take off with it, that's not going to happen. And when they see you do that, they know that you've been well prepped and properly trained. They're not even going to bother you as much as someone else. They're going to go after the easy target, the soft target, like she said. It's, most thieves operate on crimes of opportunity, is what they call them. They set out with the idea of, okay, if something presents itself, I might take it, but they're not really like waking up going, I'm going to go after her today. <laughs> right? But if you leave that gold bar laying there, guess what? That's gone. So if you leave your bag unattended, probably gone. What if you need to go to the restroom and there's only two of you? Here, will you hold my bag? Now, yes, your bag's attended, but you're alone in the restroom. Oh no. <laughs> what do you do? I take my bag with me, have it zipped in the front, and somebody go with you into the restroom. Can you take your bags in? Sure. I watched the military guys going, I don't know what to do. I can't leave my bag unattended, but I need to go to the restroom. Take it with you. <laughs> All right? And we had kind of double wearing because we had crazy weapons when we were trying to go through I don't want to leave a bunch of M16s here in the hallway. <laughs> Any other questions? Man, I want to call it. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any tips for like taking money with you? Like what's an appropriate amount? Like I'm going to be there for two months. 